Well, good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be back. George Morgan here at your service. It's PSGL, it's Wednesday night, it's Spain tonight as well. Lots on the table, lots of battling. The title contest is still alive and kicking. And Jack, it's only taken us 10 rounds. We're on the 11th. It's all to play for. Beerman goes on the inside and takes the lead on the final lap of the race. Now it's side by side between Beerman and Warner. But Beerman's got the inside. Here in this phenomenal race, Cameron Dowd looking to take P2 in his very first PSGL F1 PC race. Incredible. Let's take the lead. You see that Pete is still in. One and a half seconds. TRS. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to PSGL. It is time for another round of this amazing championship. It is round six. We're here at France. But before we get into qualifying and all of the action from France, let's rewind one week and take a look at what happened last time out when we went racing at Montreal. We're in five red lines, and they go up very quickly, and a good start from Philippe Sass on the inside. He might be able to pip Jonah Martins to the race lead straight away because he will be on the outside for turn one but will be on the inside for turn two and it's race lead to Felipe Sosa and later on in the grid we see Boris Zakosa dropping down a little bit but no real contact happening at the race start but our new race leader Emil Lundell has gone off the road through the final corner we were unable to catch that one but the Alpine driver has dropped down he is at the back of the field and has a five second gap to close back in disappointment for your pole sitter from Austria he is going to have a lot of work to do if he wants to get near the front of the field once again now that is going to be Zach Miles alongside Jona Martins and we are going to get an easy pass for second position as Drew goes the McLaren of Zach Miles as Nardi Perez picks up a three second tie value for track limits and Nardi Perez is out as well we have a safety car that was a crash that and he's gonna make Jane Tripper go on the defensive to the front. Jane Tripko is actually going to allow Alan Banasak through there so not choosing to fight that one and the Mercedes driver lets through the Red Bull who now sits in P4. Down the hairpin but it's being defended by Julian quite well there as Diaz wants to go around the outside there's almost no space there the space given by Julian definitely minimal as we see Boris Zakosek dropping down the order a little bit after a mistake through the same as we mentioned before but yeah Tias now being sent back a little bit as Kuba Treziak now finally goes with the overtake onto Luca Walsh for the back that's where the overtaking is going to be as that is Keanu Litard getting up the inside of the driver on the hards Luca Walsh who will now have Noel Coleman to contend with because the Ferrari driver is out of the system and with a bit of use of ERS he will be able to move ahead before we even get into the braking zone so it's Litard up to 11th and Coleman up to 12th Seeing how the weather is starting to evolve, I think within the next five laps or so, we could be seeing Whoa. some raindrops. And if it happens that early enough, that might be good news for all the drivers that are currently on the mediums. As C.S. Korsman has gotten past Julian. Definitely is. And Julian there made the mistake. And that is why Tyus Korsman was able to get through into turn eight. Will he be able to stay ahead though? Because... Julian's back out of the slipstream to the inside and Tyus Korsman who thought it was over has now is now gonna have to stare at the back of the Williams rear wing just for a little bit more I'll try and go all the way around the outside keep an eye on Kuba Tresniak as well this is right now the battle for eighth position in the race and Tyus Korsman was trying to attack Julian but he might get overtaken by Kuba and they're both gonna be pushing on down towards the chicane we'll go they both have DRS as Kryzix gets ahead up ahead of Jane Tripkov we are still battling for P8 and still it belongs to Julian and Kuba moves up to ninth but surely he's going to be attacking down towards turn number one and Julian's going to be under pressure Kuba will go to the outside can he outbreak his rival into the first turn how brave is he going to be all the way around the outside bit of contact and to the inside goes Keanu Litard as well Trying to take advantage there. Tyus Korsman on the outside line. And Litard found a little gap to the inside. Wasn't able to do anything with it though. He is in 11. That will all go on as well. And I think I saw a drop. 
There we go. It might be coming there in the is. rain. And yes, here we go then. The rain is starting to fall here in Canada. We expected the rain to come at the end of this race. We were riding on board with the drivers on purpose to see when the rain is starting to come. Now, the drops are starting to fall. This race is about to get really exciting in the final few stages. And he is going to go with the move. Race lead now taken by Jonah Martins. It could uh, go either way, but now we're about to get another change for the lead. Felipe Sousa pulls out, gets very close to the wall on the outside there, but moves through into the pit lane, and Jonah Martins almost gets through into the pit lane. But they're all diving it into the pit lane, but Alan Banasak, who for two reasons, possibly wants to stick out, stay out, but also didn't want to double stack with his teammate there. And it looks like the driver has done best this season. Whoa, goes round as goes Noel Coleman almost losing the car. They're battling with Julian, so to cut across mid there but Noel Coleman almost spinning the car and losing out and dropping down the order and the outside is he gonna get the car slowed down is there gonna be contact between the two of them that was so close Noel Coleman has picked up a penalty his teammate is battling with Felipe Sousa right now as we make our way onto the straight DRS4 Yona Martins it is absolutely hammering it down as you can see from the camera we've still got DRS though and Yona Martins gets his way through can Zach gets quasi gets past Alan Banasak is he gonna get the one slowed down yep he will but Zach Miles not able to stay close and make that move back because Felipe Sousa did not have DRS under the straight and, and we try and challenge Yona Martin down to the breaking zone keep an eye on Zach Miles in this one as well but Felipe Sousa is going to pull out of the system he will go to the inside being squeezed a bit by Yona Martin uh, and Felipe Sousa though is able to get through and retake the lead and also pull away as Yona Martins does not have a good exit that will leave him vulnerable to Zach Miles trying to go round the outside into turn one and Zach Miles gets ahead and gets a little bit of a tap by Yona Martins and they were lucky to be able to get away with that also great great race by both Kryzix and Tristan Debacor and after penalties oh. Tristan Debacor move up to fifth so great great race from him so Whoa. far but it's far from over Tristan Debacor and Alan Banasak first of all squeezing each other all the way into the wall then almost colliding into the chicane and now we're about to do battle into turn one neither of these drivers will be happy with each other and Alan Banasak will stay and ahead Banasak not with the best of exits and Tristan Debacor will make his way onto the start finish straight onto the final lap of the race we go and the Sauber driver moves through under braking but trying to come back around the outside Outside to the inside for Alan Banasak to hold fifth position. Great He's going to be given a penalty though. And now Tristan Debacor puts foot to the floor. And it could be a drag race to the line. And he's going to try and make the move round the outside. Alan Banasak running out of ERS. So it seems like the Sauer driver will be moving through. We'll have to cover that as they'll come over the line. Felipe Sauza for the third time this season will get to the line first. Felipe Sauza wins here in Canada. Zach Miles takes his first podium of the season. And it's the first time that Yona Martins will stand on the podium when he's not finished in first. It'll be Tristan Debacor who was able to be Alan Banasak. Wow, was that some amazing action at Canada. But now we arrive at France as I've mentioned and you can probably see by the title in the commentary box. My name is Omi and joined as usual for every single round this season so far and hopefully to be continued throughout the season. It's of course Mr. Mitt Sky. Hello Mitt. Uh, good evening, Omi. I hope you're as excited as I am for the race here tonight in France at Le Castellet. Should be a good one. It's a very flat track, very good for testing, and a lot of overtakes that could be happening at the Mistral Strait as well. So, looking forward to it. It is going to be some action pack race. Now, we had plenty of action uh, coming our way in uh, Canada. And those are your updated driver standings after that race took place and all the penalties that came in. So, no surprise, the man who took victory and the man who's taken victory three times this season in the first five races. Felipe Sousa is the championship leader with a 19-point advantage to a man who, will, who we will not be seeing today, unfortunately, Jonah Martins. Uh, and even though, of course, he's very quick and uh, a lot of the times uh, we have said that he could... Uh, put a, on a bit of a championship challenge but due to all of his other commitments of course with Ferrari esports and all that it is a bit hard for him and he realistically won't be able to do uh, all the races so um, we probably will be seeing some uh, more appearances from him throughout the season but it won't be um, 
throughout every single uh, one as well. So he's in second. You've got Luca Walster who finds himself in a good position in third. And yes, he's 40, He's almost 40. So he's uh, 39 points back in total. He's almost 40 points off. But he finds himself in a good position as Felipe Sousa told us last time that he might need to miss a few. Of course, you already know Jona Martins is missing a few. So Felipe Sousa misses... Uh, quite a few races, or uh, three races, Luca Walster could bring himself into championship contention, and maybe some other drivers could try and follow through as well. That's really going to be anyone, um, and that's also going to be uh, other drivers' realistic hope for the title, because Felipe Sanz is running out of it. They will need him to miss a few races if they want to mount the championship challenge at the end. Yeah, as far as it stands right now, Felipe has quite a commanding lead, and if he gets a good result tonight, he will move himself up with two races to spare, already being able to take the title, even though he would find it most ideal to claim the title at his home Grand Prix, which will be round 10 this season uh, at Brazil in Interlagos. Um, but yeah, as we know, Jonah is not here tonight, and if Felipe puts up a good result, then the gap towards the drivers behind are going to increase more. And if Jonah is also going to miss more races than just this weekend, uh, and, also, and the drivers in third, fourth, and fifth, so Luke Walsh, Zach Malsko, but Traziak aren't really coming closer, uh, then it could be a championship that's going to be decided early. So let's hope that does not happen. Uh, but yeah, Felipe really is the man to beat. Five races down, 3 1, one uh, other podium, a second place, and his worst place uh, placement, a fourth place in Austria. So, so far, a really stellar season by Felipe. Yep, absolutely. As well, great stuff by Felipe Sata. He will be hoping to continue uh, his form here at France. So, those are the driver standings for you. We'll move you on to the constructors to also uh, show you how those look right now. So, Red Bull in the lead, of course, right now with Alan Bannon second, Felipe Sata performing really, really well this uh, season. So, they are uh, in first. You've got Ferrari in second, of course, with Jonah Martins not uh, being here today. So, they'll, of course, have a uh, reserve. There is one seat that might not be uh, filled. We'll have to uh, confirm that when we get into qualifying, but uh, unsure whether that's a Ferrari or not, we'll check. We'll uh, let you know later. Uh, and Meta actually might be able to tell you now. Yeah, it's uh, the Ferrari that indeed won't be uh, the Ferrari seat that won't be picked okay. up. So we have four reserve drivers coming in tonight. Uh, so Carlos Torres replaces Julian 20 in the Williams. Vanus Dolovan replaces Kryzix at this home Grand Prix in the Alpha Tauri. Nico Viani replaces Thomas Boudreau in the Aston Martin. And finally, Mike Klein uh, replaces Thomas Kenny in the Aston Martin. Absolutely as well. So Ferrari will be... Uh, Ferrari won't probably have the... Um, Ferrari pro probably won't be able to pick up the most points then. And Noel Kalman, uh, he hasn't had the best few races uh, so far. So uh, it will... Uh, as you can see, um, he's only scored points once this season. It's been mostly not starting or DNFing. And then... Uh, and then also retirement as well uh, in Canada. It doesn't say that there, but I do remember he did retire. But of course, he retired in the last few laps. So the game declares it as four laps uh, down. But Ferrari, may, it might be a bit of a tough showing for them uh, this uh, race. Then you have Haas in third. They might be able to take advantage with that. And then McLaren, Alpine, Mercedes, AlphaTauri, Aston Martin, Alfa Romeo and Williams as well. Now, that is all from before. We now move into the present and of what we have coming up so we are at round number six of the season today here at france we'll go to portugal next time out azerbaijan the netherlands brazil and uh, we end the season in austin texas a lot of races coming up and of course it's going to be every single week no break week as you can see on the graphic in comparison to last season so uh, no break week we're going to be going straight into all of it we're about to get into qualifying but before we get into that, but before we get into qualifying, let's take a look at a hot lap as Mitz guides you around the uh, circuit that the drivers will be tackling today. We're here to take you through a lap on Paul Ricard, Le Castellet, 15 corners, 5.8 kilometers here at this track in France. The first corner, hard breaking into fifth, take a bit of curve. Stay away, not too much from the curve on the exit, try to get more exit there through Estela Verrier before we break, just before 60 meter points. A little bit too late there, go back to third, switch up to fourth real quick before breaking into turn five and then through Virage de la Sable, make sure that you go through fifth here because it will spin out a bit and then heading down the Mistral straight. The Ligne Droite du Mistral as we head down towards the chicane there. This used to be flat out, uh, but this time we are going to break. So as soon as you see the curve break away, break down, go for thirds, 
beep the speed up a little bit, go up into fourth. Not the best quarter for me, still some tense again, and you resume on the Mistral straight. Then, we're on our way already to turns eight, uh, through turn 10, Courbe de Signe, flat out before we break down to fifth into the double droite de Bossin. Before again we're going to four, taking a lot of curb on the entrance, and then go out. Now, left hander, Virage de Bendor, before we head out of the Courbe du Garlabin. And with two corners remaining, we have Virage de la Tour, where we break a little bit early into fourth. Go a little bit back even, and then the final corner through turn, take a lot of courage to pull, and then down the main straight, also a second DRS zone. We complete a lap around Paul Ricard. Great stuff there by Mitt, and that was uh, and that was a very good lap by him there. 5.8 kilometers, 3.6 miles around this circuit. You've of course got the two DRS zones. And definitely a lot of corners, which the drivers will be attacking. Plenty of overtaking opportunities and a very wide circuit as well as we take a look at it for the second time with 15 turns. Um, and the DRS uh, down the Mistral straight is going to be really, really powerful for all of the drivers indeed. So let's see who is going to be able to navigate the 15 corners the best. First of all in qualifying to start well for the Grand Prix that will be coming up later on. Will you currently look right now at live pictures? from uh, France. We do not have the PSGL sponsoring, unfortunately, uh, around this circuit today. However, hopefully they'll return later on in this season. But the main thing, we have cars out on the circuit and we are getting ready then to uh, set the grid for the sixth round of the season. Uh, we currently have 16 minutes to go on the uh, clock. You unfortunately do not have the French driver Kryzix joining us here today. He was That was a race that he was really looking forward to. And I was looking forward to getting him on for an interview as well. So that's very unfortunate for him. But we'll definitely get him on for one. But this was one of the races that he was really looking forward to. But unfortunately he is not able to make it here today. Now, it is overcast in this session, Mitt. You've got uh, everyone but two drivers going out onto the circuit. They are Ima Lundell and I. Perez maybe some rain could be on the horizon we've seen a lot of rain in this tier uh, throughout the season in races and qualifying so let's see if it's going to make another appearance here today yeah we've seen quite a few rain in the races already I believe in like three of the five races we've seen it at least in either quality or in the race and we see a lot of drivers come out early 18 out of the 19 drivers already out for Zakosek leading the charge but he's usually the first one out He's now making his way uh, around uh, Virage de la Tour and into Virage du Pont, which is the final corner, turn 15. So he's about to start his hot lap. He's going to turn it down to Est de la Verrière. Uh, uh, Verri, that's what it's called. I also have to uh, watch my French pronunciation there, but it's a very fast corner. And to be fair, for most of these drivers, the first two corners are where you can make or break your lap. It's one of the corners where it's not that difficult to pick up track limits. Uh, but it's also a corner where if you take it perfectly, you can gain a few extra tens. So let's see how Boris does uh, on his lap rounds uh, the 5.8 kilometer track of Paul Ricard, the Castellet. Let's see then how he gets on indeed as he makes his way onto the Mistar straight. Then DRS goes open as he tries to get a good bank lap on the board. Can be crucial because as you can see, as you can tell, it's very, very wide. And you could see drivers trying to push the limits and going all in and possibly invalidating their lap later on. So it's good to have a good bank lap if that is the case later on as well. You expect the drivers to go faster, but you still need a good one. Maybe it can keep you uh, up a few positions. Now, a driver, Mitt, who really pushed to the limits last time out in qualifying was Yona. He kept it inside the track limits, crucially. And in the first sec and second sector, he was down. It was all done in the third sector. And he was able to snatch pole position away from Felipe Salta. He's not here today, but that was an incredible effort to take pole position last time out yeah that was a full send uh, to the wall of champions the last chicane he gained at least two tens on his own lap and that alone was enough to secure pole for him as we now see boris come across the finish line and his lap is going to be a 128.9 a decent bank lap and immediately beaten by kuba treziak with a 28.5 uh, more drivers still out on track looks like jane tripkov is about a few tens quicker uh, then Boris was as Daniel Gottschalk as a driver to beat the time. And now Zach Miles goes one quicker, but on 128.4. Uh, 
I'm currently at least watching what Jane is doing, but more drivers are now going to come across the line. Carlos Torres, Luca Wallstone, now Carmen setting laps. Yes, Corsman with a fast lap time, 128.3. So we might be seeing some very lows, 128s, and it just keeps getting beaten. I've seen pole change for six times now already. And the quickest driver out on track is Tristan Debecor, who I believe is also driving his home, uh, his home Grand Prix tonight. Yep, absolutely as well. That was great stuff by Tristan uh, Debacourt there. And um, he, of course, had a great showing last time. Before that, it wasn't really a good season uh, from him. He would have been hoping for much more. However, Tristan Debacourt, he was able to get P4 last time out in that brilliant battle you would have seen in the highlights uh, with Alan Banasak all battling in the final few stages in the wet. That was great stuff. It was very close to contact between the two of them as well, though. And they were lucky to get away with that one. But Tristan Devercourt doing really well here at France. Another driver uh, who has uh, showed uh, a few... Uh, he sh he's shown pace on a few occasions. That's Ima Lundell, of course, pole in Austria. Um, and then, of course, had a decent race uh, there as well, did Ima uh, Lundell. Has been able to get on the podium uh, once he finished P3. So uh, he definitely is uh, really, really going to be looking for uh, looking to continue that momentum here at France. Of course, it was a poor race by him last time out and it was a retirement for him in Canada. So he looks to try and return back near the front of the field. You've got Keanu Litard in third, another driver who retired last time out in Canada. So there's a lot of drivers who will be looking to return back to the front of the field after a poor showing last time out in Canada. Yeah, but Emil already getting very close to Tristan's lap there. We saw he was quite on for one. Also, the final corner, uh, the Virage du Pont went quite well for him. As now Nardi Perez is going to start his first lap out in the Williams. We currently have Alan Benassek on an out lap. And Linus Dolovan had to abort his lap because uh, he picked up track limits in his fast lap. Uh, the only driver actually to do so. All the other drivers putting laps in and now within eight tenths of one another. Although it looks like there is at least some room for improvement for most of these drivers. So far, championship leaders in P4, tenth and a half away from the current pole lap time. And yeah, not too far apart from one another. But it looks like the French drivers are making a particularly good showing tonight, aren't they? They are indeed. So, it's Nadi Perez then, who makes his way down towards the chicane then. Uh, gets it slowed down back on the power for the Williams driver of Nardi uh, Perez, who uh, was able to uh, get a P8 earlier on this season. That's his best result, but he'll be hoping to get higher than that. Could this be the day that uh, that is the case as he now pushes on through the next few couple of corners? A lot of support coming in for Felipe Sousa, as per usual. Tia's calls one another driver that's liked by the uh, PSGL fan base here in F4. He is also, right now, uh, he's actually behind Felipe Sousa. So those two together on the circuit. Two rivals, of course, from F5 uh, last season. Both battling it for the championship. But Felipe Sousa not able to constantly be able to put in the practice. Which is why he wasn't able to be up there and in the end win the championship. And he dropped down uh, in the penultimate race of the season. It wasn't a good race at Silverstone. Which meant he couldn't contend with Zach Miles and, and T.S. Korsman in the final round. This season, though, he's able to put in the preparation and it's definitely showing as he's been able to, well, win three races. He's uh, scoring absolutely fantastically throughout this is uh, Felipe Sousa. It, of course, was a second in Australia. It was first in Belgium. It was a first also in Monaco. And then it was fourth in Austria. And last time out in Canada, it was first once again. So this man is really putting on an amazing season. Now, that lap was slow for Nardi Perez. It was... A 1 minute 32.169, so not a proper lap time on the board for him. Alan Banasak, though, pushing on right now in the Red Bull as he's about to send it over the line. Another driver who performed uh, well and was actually battling the man who's currently at the top of the table, Tristan Debercourt, for that fourth position. And it's Alan Banasak right now who moves up into P6. Yeah, very good final sector. His uh, second sector, at least until then, was right on par with Jane Tripko's time when we were spectating him earlier. But he's managed to gain over a tenth on him in the final sector, so great work by Alan uh, doing that. Uh, as for Nadi Perez, he did his lap without the use of ERS, so that is the reason why he was a little bit slower, but it looks like he's just doing multiple laps 
uh, to try and get a little bit of a feel for the track before he's going to do an actual quality run. Uh, so that explains how that went. Uh, but I think for now, we should go on board with T.S. Korsman, who has just started his lap time, currently in P5, had a very good showing in his first lap. Uh, let's see if he can improve on it. Let's see if he can uh, contest Tristan Debacore uh, for at least provisional pole position. So he's down in the first sector. Now, you're going to get a break from our voices for a second, and you're actually going to be able to hear from the man who is currently in your picture. And you're going to be able to hear from him about uh, how he's looking forward to this race, how he thinks that this race is going to go, and the next few races as well. Let's hear from Tyus Korsman. Uh, I'm looking to get good points today because um, my season so far hasn't been very great. After round one, it has yeah, been atrocious. Um, so today we have an interesting strategy. And I hope I can make it work out. I just need to qualify well today. And if you do that, I think I can get big points, hopefully. Um, I just need to <laughs> find a way to get back on track and get a good uh, latter half of the season going. Great to hear from Tyus Korsman. And as you would have seen, it wasn't the best of lap, which is why he is diving it in to the pit lane. A few scruffy moments on that lap time. Uh, on the lap I should say and that meant that he is not going to get the lap time on the board they're all still pushing on through the uh, last sector now we're watching the man who currently sits in P3 Keanu Litard and let's see what the AlphaTauri driver is going to be able to do it is a Sauber right now at the front of the field and uh, in the same tenth as him is Emil Lundell. They're both on 1 minute 28.2. Let's see if Keanu Litard can join them. Or can he go even faster? We have 6 minutes and 30 seconds to go on the clock. And here comes the Alpha Tari over the line of Keanu Litard, who goes to the front of the field. It's a 1 minute 28.203, almost going into the 1 minute 28.1. But now, let's see. Zach Miles goes into the 1 minute 28.1s, and Tristan Debacle looking to respond to that lap time as he comes over the line, back to the front of the field. Yeah, we're just watching Tristan improve on his lap time. Had about uh, 300, so he was quicker in the first sector. Gained half a tenth in the second sector. And that was round about equal in the final sector. So we're now going for 128 ones. I'm not sure if the drivers can go too much quicker than this. We saw Felipe Sosa uh, invalidating. Tius Korsman not going quicker. Uh, Milan Dell was also a tenth and a half down, so he aborted. Daniel Gottschalk actually improved greatly there on this lap, currently in P5. So good job by him. And it looks like two drivers currently out for their second lap, as we have a little over five minutes left on the clock. Those are Alan Banasak. And Nardi Perez, and it looks like Nardi Perez has just started his lap. Yep, absolutely. As well then, so Nardi Perez beginning a lap out of sync with everyone else. We saw him earlier on on the circuit when the, when everyone else was uh, in the pit lane and coming on to out laps. He's out of sync, uh, but he needs this lap to work for him. Mike Clinn will also be hoping to move up into the 1 minute 28s. He has uh, got um, exactly a tenth to uh, find uh, has Mike Clint, um, and uh, to get ahead or to uh, equal the time of um, Boris Zakosak, I should say. Uh, Nardi Perez then continues to make his way through as he tries to get a good lap time on the board. Right now, his teammate Carlos, Carlos Torres, a reserve driver as well, uh, is looking now to try and make his way near his teammate then let's see how this uh, final sector then is going to go for nardi perez as he tries to get the lap time on the board alan banasak already on an out lap so he's getting ready for his final run yeah judging by the sector times nardi perez should be gunning for a time close to noel carmen so he could be beating him and go to p16 unless he does something amazing in the final sector and even pip carlos torres to p p15 he now comes around Virage du Pont. He's now making his way down the main straight. And he's going to come across the line. And indeed, at 128.6. So he does pip Carlos Torres to P15. Only just. But it's good enough to put him at least a little bit closer. Still half a second away from pole position. But a very good lap. Considering that he had some improvements to do. And this was his first real lap out there on track. Now he can then quickly switch over to Alan Benasek. He was a tenth and a half slower in the first sector, but has he improved in sector two? And it looks like he has. So by a tenth, he has improved. He's now half a tenth quicker. So with that improvement, he would be going for around about a P5. 
if you can do a little bit more, perhaps even get beyond that. So pretty good lap that Alan is on currently, but I think most of our drivers will be exiting the pits in a moment, as I already see a few drivers moving. I believe I also see a, a Mercedes moving there. So I think the drivers are just about to get ready for their final run, and I don't think Alan will have time to do so, but he jumps into the pits. He knows he can go quicker, so he sets himself up for a third and final run by now coming into the pits. He does indeed then. So Alan Banasak is into the pit lane, still in sync with everyone else. And everyone else is heading onto the circuit, as you can see right now, in the um, onto the uh, circuit right now. So it'll be Tristan Devercourt, who will actually be one of the first drivers to push on. And the French driver, hoping to be on pole at the French Grand Prix. Bit of a disappointment that Crisis couldn't be here. But Tristan Devercourt is definitely going to uh, try and... Still perform high uh, here at the French um, Festival qualifying and then we'll be going into the Grand Prix later on. But this is definitely great stuff by Tristan Debacourt. And of course it's a circuit that as you can already see that he is very, very good at. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on in this final run. Yeah, and for now the driver leaving the pack for the final run is Jane Tripkoff. Currently finds himself in P12 with a 128.503. And uh, not too far away for the man just ahead, so hopefully for him that he can still set a top 10 qualifying result. And uh, not too far away, we also find Tristan Debacor currently holds pole position by 25 thousands of a second in comparison to Zach Miles. And one of the latest drivers to exit the pits uh, is Felipe Sosa, who currently is in P6, but is our championship leader. So at the end, we'll be watching him, but looks like a Ferrari driver has jumped to the... Let's go and hop on board with Noel Carmen and let's see if he can make an improvement. Let's hop on board then with Noel Carmen indeed, as he is about to start pushing around this circuit. What sort of lap time is he going to be able to deliver is going to be the question. We are about to get the answer to that then, as he'll make his way out of the final corner on this circuit. You've got so many French drivers in contention. You've still got Tristan Debacle. You've got Keanu Lita there as well. But what can Noel Kalman do? The only Ferrari, the sole remaining Ferrari is for this race, as no reserves were able to take up the other seat. And we are missing, of course, Yona Martins. Nadi Perez has retired, so he'll be at 15th at best. But that is only if that the man we're currently on board with or the other three drivers that find themselves in the bottom uh, four do not improve. Noel Carmen though, is not improving in the first sector. He's down by a tenth of a second. Clouds still in the air, but it doesn't seem like it's going to affect this session as Noel Carmen makes his way down the Mistral straight. How is he going to be able to do? And with GRS open, is he going to be able to gain some time? Another part of the circuit where you could go all in and try and gain some time. If he wants to gain a few, if he wants to gain a few places, he might want to try and risk it in this um, final sector now and see where he's able to gain some time. And he's still down, but he's gone even quicker than in the first. So he's uh, minimized the gap to 17,000. So it's all going to be down to the last sector for Noel Coleman. Let's see if he can try to do what his teammate did last time out and have an extraordinary final sector that can get him up a few places. It won't be pole for him, but let's see if he can try and gain some places. As he makes his way through, that was very close to track limits through there, and he'll make his way out of the last few corners now with Noel Coleman as he tries to find the improvement. The Ferrari man brings it out of the final corner. The checkered flag is out at the end of qualifying here in France. We first of all see what Noel Kalman can do as he comes over the line. It's an improvement of 46 thousandths of a second, but it is not enough. Oh, Tristan Debercourt has invalidated and Ema Lundell. Awesome. Keep an eye on him. So, Zach Miles has invalidated as you rightly mentioned. We'll also focus on Keanu Litard and see whether he can try and take pole position away. At the moment, it's a French driver on pole. Can we get another French driver who maybe tries to take it away or even make it a French front row? Here comes Keanu Litard over the line in the Alpha Tari. Can Keanu Litard steal pole away? He can. Keanu Litard to the front of the field. Incredible stuff. Can Ima Lundell spoil the French party right now? At the front of the field, Ima Lundell over the line, and Ima Lundell has taken pole, and he's gone into the 1 minute 27. That is a great lap by him, but we still are seeing more drivers improving. What about Felipe Sousa? Can he get himself onto pole? No, he's missed out. He's into second, but Ima Lundell, pole in Austria, pole in France, and he has spoiled the uh, 
French party at the front of the field. It will be a French second row. Keanu Leetard and Tristan Debacor, third and fourth. But a great lap time by Ima Lundell, who was able to beat Felipe Sousa. What an amazing last lap by Emil Lundell, almost improving by three tens there. And Felipe Sosa did the exact same thing there. And that is why we find these two drivers on the front row. And as you rightly mentioned, a second row filled by only French drivers, Kenelito, Tristan Debecourt, with both their best qualifying sessions of the season so far. Then a third row is all British drivers, Zach Maus, Luca Walso. And fourth row is all Polish drivers with Kuba Trezijek, Alamanasek. Now, that's something you don't see very often. Then P9, Jin Tripkov and Janio Gottschalk as they finish off the top 10. And then after that, we find T.S. Korsman, Boris Akosek, Sparky, Nikoviani, Linus Donovan, Mike Lang, Nardi Perez, Carlos Torres. And in P19, our only Ferrari driver, the sole Ferrari driver, 49, Noel Carmen. Indeed. Now we're gonna go for a quick little break. When we return, we will be bringing you the action from France. So, you join us back now here, uh, getting ready for the race. Of course, we've got a lobby restart. As you would have seen, Daniel Gottschalk didn't get a penalty in that qualifying session. Now, a uh, big shout-out, of course, to our sponsors. You can see the GT Omega chair right next to me. Really, really comfy. Really, really enjoyable. You can get that along with many other products. And when you do that, make sure you also use the code PSGL at checkout for 5% off. And also, uh, SRC with uh, all of their uh, setups and Basically, there's plenty of stuff as well that can really, really help you uh, on the F1 game. A lot of coaching and all sorts of stuff. You can take a look at that as well. Uh, so make sure you do so. And big and uh, big shout out, of course, to those two amazing sponsors of ours. Now, uh, Mitt, that was a fantastic qualifying. We always get fantastic qualifying endings. That was incredible, though. Of course, we almost got a French driver on pole, which I think uh, always is really, really interesting to see whether... Uh, uh, and also, um, it's always interesting to see, of course, the home favourites do uh, well as well. And also, at the same time, some drivers who don't usually do well around other circuits, but of course, they probably put in more preparation and are more good at the circuit, as it's their home races, they drive around it more often. So it's also great to see them up there. Yeah, it definitely is. Really, when I saw the qualifying session, I thought it was going to be all for uh, Tristan, as he was doing so well in his first and second run. And it was not really that he faltered in his final run. It was just two other drivers that managed to find a couple of tens, and that was enough to pip him to pole position. So great, great job once more to Milan. Driver, so Keanu Luto, and uh, of course... The driver we just mentioned, uh, not Boris Akosek, who's also driving his home Grand Prix, but of course Tristan Debecor in the Zauber. Now we're just waiting uh, for everyone to uh, ready up. Uh, we had a lobby restart, as mentioned previously, and then we're going to see the race. We did see sunny weather, so we should see uh, the same uh, weather for uh, the race. Now we're going to see 27 laps here tonight, so we'll probably have racing for a good 35 to 40 minutes, and... Yeah, safety cars could happen. It's a track, though, with a lot of runoff, so you'd have to do something fairly crazy uh, to get a safety car. Um, but we've seen a few years ago that if you've been in a wall at the end of uh, the double droite de Bosset, so turn 11 after senior, uh, that you can uh, pick up a safety car if you do uh, put that Ferrari in the wall there. Yep, absolutely. 
as well you definitely can as well so that'll be interesting to see if when the drivers do push the limits but of course much more easier than let's say canada and some of the other circuits that we've been to uh to avoid hitting the barrier with with the amount of runoff that we've got around this uh circuit i mean uh, if uh, if the drivers want to do a no corner cutting race then this is the best circuit to do so if anyone wants to do one as well this is the best circuit to do so uh, i remember when i used to uh, when i was driving i always loved to do some no uh, rules uh, races around it definitely a lot of fun just sending around in multiplayer it's really really fun around the circuit isn't it it really is a lot of fun to drive i had so much uh, joy as well doing the hot lap uh, yesterday evening and normally with the hot laps i'd spend like half an hour finally making sure that i nail a lap without getting like penalties or uh, spins or weird stuff and then I just rage quit out of it but with this one not at all not at all I really enjoyed driving went for lap for lap for lap and even though I had a good lap in I was like no I want to continue I want to continue I want to keep driving and even when I had another good lap in because I improved by like seven oh I Seems like a little bit of Discord lag taking place. For a lot of uh, you youngsters out there, also uh, a good uh, track to uh, try and practice. It definitely is as well. And the great thing is, as you told me, of course, that when you finish all of the hot lap, you're usually, you would usually be like, oh, right, okay, right, finally, that's done, I'm out of here. But no, absolutely not. You continue driving around. Like, that's how much fun you were having. <laughs> yeah, it's not something that I'll see a lot. Perhaps I'll have the same for Azerbaijan, even though most of the drivers don't. I have left that I enjoy driving on Zandford as well Interlagos I do like to drive as well so maybe the hot laps at the start of the season weren't too fun I mean Australia was absolutely dreading to do that uh, but uh, it's getting a little bit better although uh, I'm not sure the drivers might agree with me <laughs> yeah, I don't think the drivers will agree with you, especially when it comes to circuits like Baku. And that is going to be some chaos. And we've had a lot of wet races this season. If we get a wet Baku, that's going to cause <laughs> some... Uh, that is going to cause uh, another level of chaos in uh, that one as well. So that's going to be a really, really exciting race in Azerbaijan. A chaotic race in Azerbaijan, of course. You also have Brazil. That's going to be another exciting one. And we'll talk more about the races coming up after this. Uh, after this race because we are about to go racing in France. So, uh, Mitt, can we have some early predictions? Who do you think is going to take it? Well, we've seen the French drivers do really well, so if they can nail their strategy, we could definitely see them on the podium. Um, but yeah, I mean, of course, the driver that we always have to mention is Philippe Sosa. It would be very uncommon for him not to finish on the podiums, seeing the pace that he's had in previous races, and also, once again, here in qualifying. Uh, but this time, I don't think he's going to take it. I think Emil Lundell will actually get the race win. I'll go for P2A, Tristan Nebacora, then P3 Ooh. filled by Philippe Sosa. Interesting stuff. Love to hear your uh, predictions as well when it comes to it so great stuff there so that's going to be exciting to see whether that does happen or not what we are about to get though is cars attacking this circuit and attacking each other as well so we're going to get plenty of action of course right now at this stage they're all going to be loading their uh, setups and um they're all of course going to be getting uh, everything ready as well with um We've, of course, gone into uh, the qualifying one won't carry into the race due to, of course, um, we've gone back into the lobby, uh, the main lobby settings and uh, con reconfigured it all. So they'll all be loading their setups and then getting into it. Uh, now, of course, as you can see, uh, we don't have any PSGL sponsor boards this race. They'll hopefully be back uh, for the remainder of this season. But uh, uh, this is one of the circuits where... We don't really mind too much at all because uh, the barriers aren't like really, really close compared to, let's say, Monaco or um, Azerbaijan, those circuits that we visit as well. We've already visited uh, Monaco. That was a wet race. That was really, really fun. That was really, really chaotic. We're still yet to go to Azerbaijan and that could be exciting as well. We are about to go racing. Three, four, five red lights in Le Castellet. And we're racing in France with a good getaway by Felipe Sousa, who's going to try and contend with Emil Lundell down to turn number one. Emil Lundell holds the lead. Felipe Sousa is in second, trying to dive to the inside. It's Keanu Litard on home soil, trying to make his way through, but he wasn't able to do so. Felipe Sousa's teammate, Alan Banasak, has gone off the road in the background, but he's continued on. It's Zach Miles, who is battling with Luca Walsh, who's throwing a nose in there. Is that one going to work for the Haas driver, who battles now with Zach Miles as they go on to the brakes? Both Haas's are in a battle. The other one 
Daniel Godchak battling right now with Alan Banasak as Ima Lundell though with the lead as you'll make our way onto the Mi Star straight and Luca Walster getting ahead of Zach Miles. A really, really good start so far by Daniel Gottschalk, but also his teammate Luca also up one position. Most drivers haven't gained too many. Daniel's the one to gain the most. But interestingly enough, all the drivers have started on the hard set of compounds, so nobody going for an offset strategy here. So I think most of the drivers will be just be driving on the hards for quite a while, then change to the mediums and finish the race on that, unless they want to try something else. But it looks like Felipe is already closing in on Emil Landau. Look at how close Felipe has gotten. Uh, before he decides to leave a little bit of space between him and Emil. But that also means that behind him, Piano Luto is going to close down the gap a little bit and see if he can make a move on Felipe so far. But the first lap, at least until now, has been fairly calm. No chaos or anything happening there. And the drivers, at least in our top four, are still remaining in their starting position. They are indeed, and look how close they all are together. It's only Noel Coleman who's had a few issues. He's diving into the pit lane, so that might explain to us why he's going to retire out of the race. So a disappointing opening lap, possibly picking up some damage, and that is it for him there. But look at everyone else, all nose to tail to nose to tail right now. You cannot see a gap right now. I've not spotted one that's bigger than four tenths. That is going to change in a few seconds, though, as they'll make their way through the corners. But they're all remaining so close together. This is incredible. They're all in a line. Um, and uh, I think this is the closest one. We've had drivers in DRS trains all the way from 1st down to 20th. But we're usually getting drivers on the 8 tenths, 9 tenths mark. Everyone is uh, under 5 tenths off a second. Luca Walster though, just uh, over right now. But they're all so close together. But the one who's getting really close is Felipe Sousa. Because Ima Lundell has got no car ahead of him to get any sort of slipstream by. So it's going to be Felipe Sousa going on the attack. Even though everyone's really close together. They're all sitting behind right now. And already starting to get, uh, starting to get in a rhythm in this race. Uh, even though uh, we still have no DRS. But they're all starting to get into a tiny bit of a rhythm at this stage as we're on lap number two about to go into lap number three but the first few changes is going to be for uh, the race lead with Felipe Sousa attacking Ima Lunda with the DRS but everyone else they may all be close together but they're all deciding to sit back and a bit of a calm start to this race compared to uh, other starts that we've seen this season but it's an exciting one that is coming up and definitely building with how close they all are together. Yeah, now from the start of lap 3, DRS is also going to be activated. It looks like there was some sort of incident with Noel Karma, which resulted in him going into the pits and retiring the car. As we see, Emil Lundell set the fastest lap time for now, when 33.091. And indeed, here we have the confirmation by race control. DRS has been enabled. And I think now, down the Mistral straight, we're going to see some overtakes for the lead, because Felipe has been holding back a little bit. Didn't want to go for the overtake just yet. But now on the main straight, he's going to have such an advantage that he will just fly by Emil Lundell. And we'll have to do so here at the first bit because we have two DRS zones here on the track. The first one is right over here. The second bit of the Mistral straight, there is no DRS zone there. And then the final DRS zone is at the start-finish straight. So if Felipe wants to make a move, he's got to do it now. But he just hangs on at the back. He will be much, much closer than he was the last lap. And now with the slipstream, could be going for a move here just before Senior or just after Senior. But see how much Felipe is already closing in. But he's not going full throttle anymore. He's leaving the throttle a little bit. So he does not want to go for an overtake. Just wants to hang within the DRS zone and try and save his tires just a little bit. So, Felipe Sousa isn't going to make it unless it is slam dunk. Different story, though, if you're in the middle of the pack. Because you're going to oh. want to take it. And here we go. As that is, Felipe Sousa, who has had a moment. Felipe Sousa has had a moment. He's gone off the road. And the championship leader, after having quite a few good races, every single race this season has been good for him. This one, though, it's going to be a bit of a recovery drive for the Red Bull driver battling for the lead. He has spun out and is now at the back of the field. That came out of nowhere. We saw Felipe driving and all of a sudden he just lost the car. I believe that was around uh, Viraj, uh, the Bendor. So turn 12 is where he lost it. Very uncommon spot to lose the car there. So I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Uh, Mike Klein has decided to abort as well. His headset's not working, doesn't have any sound. So that doesn't help him out. But yeah, Felipe has to do an amazing recovery drive now as we see him almost lose the car yet again as he makes his way through Virage de Calm. So he's definitely struggling a little bit with the car. I'm not sure if there's either damage to the car, if there's something wrong with the setup, or even his real-world setup. 
But this is not looking good for Felipe. And for the other drivers on the field, they might be rubbing their hands now because this is very good news in terms of a championship battle because they can now finally come closer to Felipe, who was at least two races in points away from them. But now after this race, it might become less. Could indeed. Now it's going to be the two Frenchmen putting on the pressure. T.S. Kozman having a little look to the inside of Sparky trying to make the move. And what I was saying before Felipe Salazar spun, if you are in the middle of the pack, you're not always going to be wanting to hold back because you want to try to get as closest to the front as you can by making overtake, especially if you are in 12th, like Tyus Kozman is, especially if you're in 11th as well, like Sparky's trying to get past the uh, French driver, another French driver in this field, Boris, and he'll make his way down towards turn number uh, one and we're getting some information in the live chats i know felipe salza streams his races so great uh, for you guys to be bringing all of the information to us so uh, from what we're being told his throttle got stuck so that is so unfortunate for the championship leader and he is gonna have to make a recovery drive now yeah it was very uncommon to see him make a mistake uh, especially like i mentioned in the corner where he did it so this does make a lot of sense, but it's very, very unfortunate to see he's now in P17, one previously was in P2, so has to do quite the recovery drive, but we already see this a few tenths quicker, but the difficult thing here, uh, in order to catch up, the driver's all up ahead of him, they have DRS, so he's going to lose time on the straights, he's going to lose a couple of tenths a lap just because of the DRS, so we'll have to have quite a bit of overspeed in order to close the gap, course burn through his tires will likely have to go for the set of mediums a little bit sooner and try with some strategy still to finish within the top 10 so it's going to be a very tough race for felipe now uh, unless of course a safety car comes out as we mentioned before because the walls are so so far away it's very unlikely for that to happen too so this is not the race that felipe was looking for but all of championship competitors they will be looking to take a big chunk out of that gap that felipe has up at the front and the driver that is currently closest to um, himself and Yona, because, um, of course, Yona Martins ain't, uh, isn't here either. So, and that is uh, Luca Wolster. He's running in P4, so looking pretty good for him. Could be an opportunity for him to try gain some points. And as I mentioned, for Felipe Salazar, might miss a race later on this season from what he's been talking to us about in the interviews. Uh, so definitely could be a bit of a possibility that if he does have poor, uh, if he does have bad results like that, uh, he's had good ones, but of course it can all change around very quickly in PSGL. It could all be going your way, and then very quickly there could be some dramatic twists and turns exactly like that one. Out of absolutely nowhere. Um, you wouldn't have really expected Felipe Salza to be dropping down the order like that, but of course his throttle getting stuck. Not what he wanted at all, unfortunate for uh, him. And he'll try and make a bit of a recovery drive onto the back of everyone but it's still 3.1 seconds so you can see it's not the most easiest and then of course when he gets onto the back he's got to pass absolutely everyone as well so it's not a good task for him uh, he's not going to be an enjoyable task for him he wanted to be battling out in front he'll definitely need some safety cars and a lot of chaos if he wants to be back at the front but definitely i think points could be possible when we go into the uh, pit uh, stop phase but right now at this phase it could be a very boring uh, uh, phase of the race for him with first of all trying to get onto the back of everyone and then not even being able to pass them as easily as you would like to yeah so far this lap he's lost a few tens but that is purely because of the drs so he's going to lose four to five tens a lap because of it so that means he needs to have that bit of overspeed in comparison to carlos torres but as long as carlos stays within drs range it'd be very very tough for felipe to get closer it was about 3.1 seconds at the start finish straight it's now up to 3.5 almost 3.6 even so this is not looking good for felipe although for felipe i think he'll be waiting and make sure that he nails the strategy stops a lap earlier maybe even two laps earlier so he closes in as we see tius korsman nico viani fighting for p12 tius korsman now gaining a position back uh, onto nico um, but yeah a lot of tussling in the midfield most of the gaps seem fairly fairly close but yeah with everyone having drs it's also fairly tough uh, to make any overtakes here tonight. Oh, here we go. Oh. One for the race lead. Here we go. For the lead, Keanu Lita to the front of the race. 
trying to make the move is Daniel Gotchak trying to go all the way around the outside of Cuba and he will make the move momentarily. Better traction though for the Alpine driver of Cuba who tries to come back as we will climb all the way up the hill slightly. Is he going to keep his foot in all the way around the outside? Brave stuff by Cuba and he's still trying to keep his foot in. They're wheel to wheel as we make our way through trying to get his elbows out. It's the house of Daniel Gotchak and he will show the curb to Cuba. He'll try to come over to the inside. Cuba gets there first though and he'll try to gain the position. Shows the same treatment to Daniel Gotchak that he got a few corners ago by showing him the curb. Cuba moves up to sixth. Very, very close fight between the two. I really thought that Daniel had the move complete, but Cuba wasn't going anywhere and indeed showed Daniel that he is not letting go of P6 that easily. So well done by Cuba to defend and to hold of uh, uh, Daniel for the time being as we have a little bit of a lag and that is causing some changes in the pack. It looks like Kenolito yeah. is still ahead of Emil Lundell though. So, not entirely sure what exactly yeah, changed. So what we do see is that at the back, Felipe is starting to lose over half a second a lap. He is indeed. So, I think most of the lag issues from what we're seeing from the position changes is mostly at the back. Where we're seeing about three drivers getting past uh, one in uh, a few seconds and all the changes are happening basically from uh, around 10th downwards. That's, I think, where we're getting it. We are getting another change of lead. Ema Lindell back to the front of the race. And he gets past Keanu Letard, who drops back down to second position. It's Tristan Debacourt in third. All drivers on the hard compound of tyres. All of them on the same strategy. And Felipe Sauz are not able to make the inroads on all of the other drivers that he would have, wanted, that he would have liked to. And he has dropped down. Uh, more time, 4.5 seconds right now. So, disappointment for Felipe Sousa, who uh, will need to wait till the pit stops. And as I mentioned, it'll be a bit of a boring phase for him. Luca Walsto, though, is getting very close to the back of Tristan Debacol. Zach Mars getting even closer to the back of Luca Walsto as well. So, in some interesting battles now starting to form. And if you are close to your rival, then you could use a bit of ERS and try and make the move. And you can see they're all so close together as we make our way onto the start finish straight then on lap number nine of this one. Ima Lundell is uh, two tenths ahead of Keanu Litard. Right now, Carlos Torres has uh, dropped outside the one second of the cars ahead. So that might mean that Felipe Sousa could be gaining a tiny bit uh, on him soon. So that'll be interesting to see as they all continue to push on right now in this uh, race, Jane Tripkov currently running a ninth. You have Boris in 10th. Uh, and Tyus Corzon and Sparky were battling earlier on. They uh, have... Uh, they're now sticking behind each other. 11th and 12th for them. Onto the straight. We go then once again. And let's see. Are we going to be getting a move? Tristan looking a bit close to Keanu Lita. What about Kuba? To try and make a move. On Zach Miles. He decides to sit behind there. But it's Ima Lundell, Keanu Lita, Tristan Debacol, Luca Walster, Zach Miles, the top five. And we're going to get most of the overtaking when the drivers start paying. I think we're right now just in a waiting phase. So make sure you stick with us. Make sure you like and subscribe for more action in PSGL. Uh, like the one that you are getting right now. But we're mostly right now just waiting for that pit stop phase. And when we get into it, that is when the race is going to explode. Like it has done every single race this season. And really like it does in every single PSGL season. Yeah, it really will, but for now we're looking because with the hearts are going to do more than half of the race distance. So I think starting lap 14, 15, we'll see some drivers come in. I think the ideal stopping time will be around lap 16, maybe even 17. And as we see Nico Viani now go with the overtake onto T.S. Korsman, that is for P12. Uh, we saw Carlos Torres make a mistake at the end of the final lap uh, earlier on, the final corner. And the last lap, that is why he momentarily fell out of the RS zone, but gained that back in the Estela Verri, which is turns one and two, and that allowed him to close in within the arrest range and make it more difficult for Felipe to catch up with him once more. In the meantime, though, Daniel Gottschalk is moving awfully close, but a slight mistake there by Zach Miles. So we should keep our eyes peeled onto Kuba Traziak because this might be an overtake for P5. 
It could be indeed onto the Mistral straight we go. Possible move coming for Alan Banasak. Trying to get past Daniel Gotchak. That will be. It seems like he won't be able to make the move. Kuba is going to have a go though. He was aggressive when fighting Daniel Gotchak. How aggressive is he going to be? How brave is he going to be? He'll get to the apex first. He'll turn the outside to the inside to fifth position in the race right now. What can Zach Miles do to respond? He'll use a bit of EOS. He'll try come back on the inside. Both of them running wheel to wheel. Nothing between them. As they fly their way through right now inside for Zach Miles. Surely Kuba's going to be shown the curb once more. He's going to back out. He knows that he doesn't want to be at that part of the circuit. Zach Miles continuing to defend. Kuba continuing to attack. Great, great battle once more between the two. We see that the drivers really don't want to give up on track position there. So as we see another little bit of a lag there as now Zach Miles has to avoid with Treziak up ahead and with that little bit of an issue he's immediately under pressure uh, by Kuba once more but yeah Kuba having a pretty good race so far trying to make his way up a little bit more though Daniel is the one with the most positions gained so far that is three positions for him um but yeah the battle definitely heating up behind the p5 behind the mclaren of zach miles and kuba treziak daniel got Chalk waiting anxiously to try and go for a move there we're still in lap 11 so still a little bit of time to go but look how close daniel got is getting to kuba treziak yeah we've been given more information in the live chat so big thanks to everyone uh, as well for that so just arrived from felipe stream just to say that a steering wheel had a sudden disconnect that's why it went off on lap number three as well so yep it's gonna be a hard one from here for him keanu Litard continuing to get close to email lundell but it's the midfield that we're getting a few overtakes here and there not too many though as i mentioned as we are in the waiting phase but the waiting phase is just getting us excited and excited till those pit stops and we're getting closer i promise you we are getting closer to that and we're getting closer to another move because keanu Litard was getting super close the top three starting to pull a little bit away it is only five tenths and you'd usually say well he's not well they're not really but with how close they've been running so far uh, these uh, top three right now just pulling a tiny bit of a gap very very tiny indeed though still drs still comfortably uh, still comfortably in drs for luca wallstone but the top three trying to run a little bit away with uh, this one and then zach miles could get interested as well uh, so will kuba we know how those two drivers have battled and given us action so far so if an opportunity arises they will definitely take it and look for some moves lap 12 of this one so far yeah, at this point, we're really looking for the drivers to make any of the slightest mistakes because we see with the long straights, the long Mistral straight, how easy it is to go for an overtake there. So as long as no mistakes are being made, there should not be any overtakes there, really. As we do see Daniel try to take different lines in comparison to Kuba uh, to try and get closer to him. As Carlos Torres is the first driver to pick up a penalty for tonight, at least for track limits, that is, three-second time penalty for uh, multiple warnings, which is the track limits I just spoke of. We did see Noel Carmen, Mike Lane pick up five seconds for speeding in the pit lane. That's another thing that we might see happen a little bit more as soon as the pit subsequence happens. But with how close the gaps have been, getting a five second penalty here will almost definitely mean that you're going to finish outside of the points tonight. So definitely drivers need to be careful with that within the lap or two in order to make sure that that does not happen. So far, though, the gaps are starting to close down a little bit more, uh, but no more changes really have been made. T.S. Korsman has gone back onto Nico Viani uh, just a moment ago, and also Linus Donovan has gone past him. He is now in P13, but top 10, at least for now, remains unchanged. Super sub performance it was in Belgium by Linus Donovan. Didn't have the same fortune, though, last time out in Canada. He is back here racing and uh, not able to challenge at the front like in Belgium. So let's hope there's uh, more circuits that we go that he uh, drives and that he's good at as well. So we're able to see him fighting back at the front. And we have Felipe Sousa. So the championship leader has dived it into the pit lane. So the championship leader, Felipe Sousa, is into the pit lane and he knows that it wasn't working for him he wasn't gaining any time there is no point just leaving himself out there continuing to lose time he's gonna try pit early get a bit of an undercut get himself into the battle and then from there he'll try and make some overtakes and try and make a comeback to score some points in the french grand prix yeah this really is one of the only things that he can do because as we mentioned that safety car is very very unlikely and unless we have a big big accident between the drivers but these drivers are quite experienced so it's 
very uncommon to see that happen. And I would assume that Felipe has switched to the mediums, which he has done indeed. So we'll be finishing the race on those set of compounds. Most of the drivers, I think, will come in in about two or three laps. So they will have fresher tires compared to Felipe towards the end. Uh, but with the early pit stop, that at least means for Felipe that he will be able to contest the drivers currently too far away for him. Also, Carlos Torres likely is going to go in in a moment. He's now 4.4 seconds away from teammate Nardi Perez. And we see some more gaps emerge. There's also Linus Donovan was momentarily outside of the DRS range as Carlos Torres picks up yet again a penalty for track limits. So I think he'll be coming in at the end of the slap, but more drivers are coming in, and it's actually a lot of drivers just diving it in. As Kubit Shraziak picks up a five-second uh, time penalty for speeding in the pit lane. It looks like most of our championship competitors are really just countering Felipe's strategy here tonight. So they're not racing really with each other. They're racing with Felipe, even though Felipe is down and lost. Carlos Torres has retired from the race to become our third retirement. But we are also now currently uh, just getting them all come back onto the circuit. Ema Lindell, Tristan Debacle, Daniel Gottschalk, Alan Banasak, Tyus Kuzman, Cuba. And then you have uh, Boris and Felipe Salzo pit one lap ago, who have all made a pit stop so far in this one. The top eight continuing on right now at this race. This is the this is the waiting phase I was talking about. Now the action's about to come. The gaps are going to be bigger. More overtakes will happen that way as well. So it, it, it can be a positive. More overtakes will happen. Less cars with DRS. Um, so there will be more defending, more overtaking happening. So there will be plenty of action coming our way as well. As we now make our way. Uh, through with Keanu Litard being chased by Luca Walston and Zach Mauser. Now those three are continuing on and we'll, see, and we'll be seeing them dive into the pit lane very, very shortly. And Luca Walston getting very close to try and take the lead. He was getting super close to the back of Keanu Litard. Had a little look on the inside, but obviously sitting behind as he knows that he doesn't need to make the move uh, at that part of the circuit. Now, into the pit lane comes Letard, into the pit lane comes Wallstow, and Zach Miles also all following in, as they'll all bunch up a tiny bit. As we go into the very tight pit lane it is, Nico uh, Viani as well diving in, is Sparky the driver who has continued on, so he'll go to the front of the race, but into the pit lane, we see them all come, and this is going to be exciting to see then, how are they going to come out in comparison? Alan Banasak picking up a three second time penalty, and we mentioned with how close the gaps are going to be at the end, that that could really, really cost you, as we watch Keanu Lita then make his way to the pit lane exit through goes Ema Lundell let's see now where they all will filter out there's the Haas of Daniel Gottschak who is ahead of Litard. then you have Alan Banasak who is going to be ahead of Luca Walsto who rejoins ahead of Korsman and then you have Zach Miles Jane Tripkov and then Kuba Tresniak and Boris and then Nico Viani coming out in 15th position and he is gonna have uh, Felipe Sousa chasing him behind. So Felipe Sousa's first car to overtake is going to be Nico Viani as he tries to recover in this race. Yeah, and the most notable thing that has happened so far in the pit stop sequence is the gap between Tristan Debecor and Daniel Gottschalk. They stopped at the same moment a lap earlier. But look at that, Keanu Lutel already going for the overtake onto uh, Daniel. But he needs to. He needs to close that gap quickly to Tristan Debecor. Otherwise, a top classification at least on the first or second step is going to be out of the question for him because he now has a 2.2 second gap uh, ahead of him and no DRS to battle with so that is going to be a tough tough battle for him and if Emil Landau and Tristan Debecourt decide to work together just leapfrog each other with the DRS not hold each other up not hold in and it's going to be very very tough for the guys in the back to try and catch that pack so that is another fight that we should be keeping an eye on uh, but I think down the start finish straight we might see an overtake by Felipe Salsa onto Nico Vian. We could get that coming our way indeed then. So, uh, we have a pit stop coming in by Sparky, which will promote the uh, top two, the net race leaders, into third position right now. So everyone who's pit um, is, of course, uh, has already made a pit stop right now. Everyone on the mediums has, of course, already made a pit stop. And the two drivers on the hard, Dylan Sonovan and Nardi Perez, continuing on and going a tiny bit longer in this one. Felipe Salsa still not able to find a way through, so he'll probably be looking for it on the Mistral straight as well. So many other drivers in this field, and we're about to go there with 
Tristan Debercourt. Let's see if the Sabre driver is going to try and move his way through. It'll actually be Nardi Perez as these two continue to push on. Not made a pit stop so far, but they continue to push on indeed. And here we go with Tristan Debercourt out of the slipstream. And the French driver to the inside to the lead of the race for the Sabre man who moves out to third. But when everyone else pits ahead, when the top two pit, that will be the net race lead for him as Keanu Litard still ahead of Daniel Gottschak and they're all in a train as Zach Miles tries to get on the back of Tyus Korsman these two championship rivals from F5 about to risk it that is brave stuff by Zach Miles who threw a nose in there hoping that his rival would give him room he just about gave enough room and Zach Miles finds a way to move up to P9 yeah, and we're still also keeping an eye on the gap between what is now Milan Del Keanu Lito. Keanu is closing in by a few tenths a lap, so that is good news for the Alpha Tauri driver because he needs to get within DRS range of Emil Lundell. But of course, here down the start finish straight, that gap is going to increase a little bit. It was 1.8 as Linus Donovan is in. Nardi Perez still the only driver out. Milan Dow getting dangerously close once again to Tristan Debecourt. And yeah, that gap that was 1.8 has been actually cut back down to 1.8, even though it was a little bit more. So this so far is good news for Keanu. If he can keep it up, Sneak Koviani picks up a three-second time penalty for track limits. But if uh, Keanu can keep... That opens up a window of opportunities for him, because that means he's battling for the race win. Talking about the race win, talking about the race lead, that is another pass. Pass and repass again. Ima Lundell takes the lead once more then. And there is Keanu Lita, Daniel Gottschak all in a train right now. And we look further back to Felipe Sousa and Nico Vianni, who still isn't able to make a move through. So this is going, uh, this is be currently a horrid race for Felipe Sousa. Not what he wanted at all and that moment uh, we, and that moment which we thought we would see him making up a lot of places to try recover it's not happening unfortunately as sparky is making a move on boris and he went to the inside so the mclaren driver manages to get his way through into the pit lane comes nadi perez so the two drivers in your picture right now at the moment are about to have the lead on the circuit as well. This will be the battle till the end, unless we get any safety cars, unless we get any changes, with possibly Keanu Litard, if we can push on, maybe dragging a few more drivers along for the party of who is going to win the sixth round of the season here in PSGL F4 here in France. Yeah, and it looks like, at least in comparison to the last lap, that Keanu Luto has once again gained two tens onto the pairing of Emil Lundell, Tristan Debecourt. So if he can keep this up with about three or four laps, he will be within striking distance, will be within DRS range. And then from then onwards, it's going to be coming closer and closer and closer until the fight for the race lead is going to open up at the final few laps of the race. In the meantime, Felipe Sosa is still behind Nico Viani, so it's not looking good for Felipe. He does have a few drivers ahead of him who are currently on penalties, uh, but from that, it's only the penalty that from Nico Viani that uh, Felipe will profit from, so we'll need to go for some extra overtake. After his... He will indeed. And uh, more discord. Functions can happen as well, or disconnects indeed. Um, but in this case, that would mean the difference between, a, well, potentially a solid uh, podium finish, uh, and now no points for him. It does make the championship more interesting, but for Felipe, of course, this is not what you want whatsoever. Yep, uh, apologies for the little discord lag that we're having. Continuous discord lag, unfortunately, uh, coming where, uh, at times, I was cutting out from it. He's cutting out for me, of course, uh, uh, a few times as well. So Discord not being kind to us today. So apologies if Mitt is cutting out at uh, a few uh, moments as well. But uh, luckily it is bearable and we're able to just about continue here then at France. Lap number 19 out of 27. We are about to make our way into the final few stages. It's a sprint from now till the end unless we get an interruption like a safety car. Which is pretty low around this circuit as it's, as, as it's much more harder for the drivers to find a, bar find a barrier. Which it is possible but a less, a less harder compared to some of the other races. So they need to most likely have a bit of a crash on the circuit for um, a safety car to come out then and that is Luca Wallstow 
who manages to get past Alan Banasak. Is he going to come back on the inside? Nope, he's going to tuck back in and sit in the wheel tracks. Keanu Litard. we mentioned about him closing the gap. It's 1.3 seconds and he is bringing... Uh, more cars with him. That is going to be brave stuff by Luca Wallstow. Honest teammate. And he throws one to the inside. And Daniel Gottschak chooses not to fight that one too much. Uh, of course, it's his teammate. So he uh, just got out of the power there when he saw Luca Wallstow was alongside. Great stuff by Wallstow, though. He managed to move up to fourth. And as I mentioned, we talked about this earlier. You don't have Jonah Martins. You don't have Felipe Sousa. You take a look at the gap. It's 40 points. You have Luca Wallstow here, currently sitting in P4, about to join the battle for the lead, as is everyone in this train, all the way down to 10th. You're going to have a 10-car battle for the lead now, as uh, Keanu Lutard is inside the one second. But for Luca Wallstow, if he can pick up a victory, it is going to be so crucial for him, knowing that possibly you're going to have Felipe Sousa and Jonah Martins both missing a few more races. And here comes Zach Miles, trying to throw it all the way around the outside of turn number one. That is great stuff by Zach Miles. The Red Bull, though, shown... The curb once more, though, like he was on the opening lap. And we see Zach Miles move up to six. Alan Banasek down to seventh. But this could be great for Luca Wallstow. Yeah, the fight's really amping up here. As we also see Felipe Sosa getting closer to the back of both Nico Vianney, Boris Zakosek. So that means for now he's virtually in P12 after those penalties are applied. But the battle we're really looking at is what is happening down behind Keanu Lito because here comes Luca Walso and past that uh, Keanu Lito he goes. A great, great pace so far by Luca Walso. Really start to pick up the pace in the last few laps, but he knows they're getting dangerously close to Emil Lundell and Tristan Davicor. That gap now 1.0. If he can get within a second now in this final sector, he will pick up the DRS and he will be able to close in. And he is now within, indeed within A10. So it looks like they have finally closed the gap. And with seven laps to go, we're going to see a fight that goes all the way down to P10. At least the drivers within the US range. Of course, two of them really not fighting oh. for the race win here. Alan Manasa, Kubit Shreziak, who have a penalty to their name. Uh, but the rest there should we go. still be all fine for it. Felipe Sousa trying to get past Nick Aviani, who was battling with Boris. That's why Felipe Sousa has had an opportunity to pass in this race. But still, Nick Aviani has been getting his elbows out. Because from what he's seen so far, he knows that he can defend his position. And he's trying his absolute best. Felipe Sousa trying to fight his way through as well. At the same time, they're battling with Boris as they go down towards turn number one. And Felipe Sousa thinking about the inside, thinking about the position. Because he's going to try and get this position done as soon as possible. Because... He's had a he, uh, that was his biggest chance that he's had so far as Nick Aviani and Boris battle. They lost a lot of time. But let's see. Can Felipe Sousa now try to do it on the Mistar straight? Could he try and make a double overtake? That could work very nicely for the Red Bull uh, driver as well. We could be about to get a, uh, an easy pass for the lead if Tristan Devercourt does decide to go for it. You also do have all of the other drivers in this train right now. Uh, who are battling. That is going to be Nico Vianney, though, out of the system, getting past Boris, who backs out of it. He is not going to battle with Nico Vianney through the next few corners, because if he does that, that will allow Felipe Sousa to have the opportunity to try and get past the two of them. And he's thinking uh, nicely there is the Sabre driver, but he is going to try actually come back. He is going to try to come back. He's going to throw a nose in there. But this is what I was mentioning. If you do that, that is going to invite Felipe Sousa to the party, who looks to the inside of Nico Vianney, and Boris is now going to try and pull away. Nico Vianney still not giving this one up, and coming round the outside of Dennis Donovan. Out of absolute nowhere. I didn't even know he was there, but he is there. He's ahead of Felipe Sousa. Great stuff by Dennis Donovan, who manages to get his way past Felipe Sousa. This is absolutely a race to forget for him. Yeah, the offset strategy, of course, is now coming to bite back because if you see the drivers around him... ...still to pick up any points here tonight, but up at the front of the field, the fight has opened a little bit more. Emil Lundell still leading with five laps to go, but the gap behind him, four tenths, and it's four tenths to Luka Wolstow, two and a half tenths to Kenelito, half a second to Daniel Gottschalk, and once again, four tenths to Zach Miles. So top six really being in contention for the race win still, although Emil Lundell is starting and at least trying to pull a little bit of a gap. If you look at the ERS levels for Emil Lundell, it's 77%. Uh, Tristan Debecourt has a little bit more, 89%. Luca Walsh, of course, used a little bit to get closer, 44% for him, 65 for Kenny Luto. Daniel Gottschalk also in 46 and finally uh, Zach Miles, the lows of them all with 38%. So... It looks like Tristan at least has the upper hand when it comes to ERS, but I think Emil has enough at least 
deployment for a full lap. So it's going to be close, but the drivers definitely are going to try a couple of things in the laps to come. Absolutely, definitely are going to try a few things as well. And look at Felipe Sanz trying to go round the outside. That was incredibly close to contact. Up the inside goes Nick Caviani. Does he have the position of Boris? And Nick Caviani is going to be pushed off slightly. Trying to go all the way round the outside is Boris. What is the traction looking like for him? He's on the power. He's alongside. Is he going to be ahead? He is going to be ahead. He's past. Nick Caviani was very early on the brakes. And that kind of call. Linus Donovan uh, off guard. Felipe Sousa looks for his move. Nardi Perez is in there as well. And while we wait for the battling up from... We're about to get some bad. We're getting some battling here as Nick Caviani once again manages to find a way through on Boris. And Felipe Sousa still not able to make a move right now. And it's Nardi Perez who will be... Uh, looking to attack and Felipe Sousa with better traction could try to take this position. Linus Donovan out of shape going defensive and Felipe Sousa is there trying to make this move and we'll make our way onto the Mistral straight and an opportunity possibly coming up for Felipe Sousa but maybe even Nardi Perez because Nardi Perez looks even closer and we're making our way down the stone. We might need to cut to the leaders because look how close they are. Seems like they're not going to make any position changes on this lap so we'll be okay with that one. But these drivers still all battling. Can Felipe Salza make a move? Can Linus Donovan make a move? No. They're all going to maintain order as they make their way now. All the way through. They're past the Mistar straight. And they're making their way to the end of lap number 23 very, very shortly. Great battling here. But it's now the battling for the lead that is definitely going to take priority. Because look how close they are. And we're surely going to be seeing some passes. Especially if you are fought downwards as you try. Get yourself as close as possible to try to take advantage in this race. Yeah, we're now almost down to the final four laps. As soon as Emil comes across the line, we have lap 24, 25, 26. And the final lap, lap 27 out there. So four laps remaining indeed. The gaps also close as we see the McLaren driver looking for a little bit of a gap onto Daniel Gottschalk. Not trying to go for the move just yet, but hasn't really come close enough just yet either. But the drivers from now on will start to use a little bit of ERS as we see some more position changes happening towards the back. It's actually Linus Donovan and Boris Zakosek who dropped down the order a little bit. Nardi Perez has gotten past Felipe Sosa. So Nardi Perez currently in P13. But after penalties applied, Felipe will be moving up into 12. So at least a little bit of a better classification. But again, after the issues he's had, not, of course, what he was looking for. Further up ahead, we see a few drivers pull out. But that's just to make sure that they don't get overtaken as Emil Lundell still holds on to the lead. But we can see the lead shrinking. We see the lead shrinking. It was not as big as it was before. So in the next few laps, I assume Emil will come under pressure. And we will see some lead changes towards the end of the race. Let's see how close we can get with our predictions, though. I voted Emil Lundell for, for the race win. It was Tristan Debacor for second and Felipe in third. So third place, I think, is safe to say I'm not going to get that right. But P1 and 2, still possible. You need some absolute... You need some wild scenes to get a third position right. But first and second. Currently, it's first and second in the race of your prediction. So that's looking good for you. But Keanu Lita, Luca Walsh, all of these drivers are not going to take no for an answer. They're going give it, to give it their all as well. We are on lap number 25 as we go on to it now. And it's Daniel Gottschalk who is taking a slightly different racing line. Trying to get close. But who is going to be making some moves? And if you want to place yourself in a good position in this race, this could be the time to do it. Linus Donovan has retired out of this race. That is in the pit lane. Boris joins him at the retirement. So both of those two drivers retiring, leaving Felipe Sousa, Nardi Perez and Nico Viani battling uh, uh, along with, uh, well, uh, sorry, just uh, them all battling right now. Uh, right now just for pride because they're not going to get any points, unfortunately. So it's been a good... So it's been a very bad race for Felipe Sousa with the issues he's had and it's been a great one for Luca Walsto who could possibly call himself a championship contender uh, this season because you know we, we already know Felipe Sousa is going to miss more races you're going to have uh, also Jonah Martins as we've already t mentioned to you and that is Tyus Korsman ahead of Jane Tripkoff so possibly the two Mercedes switching positions there what about Tyus Korsman trying to go all the way around the outside of Alan Banasak that could be an incredible move and he's made it fantastic move by Tyus Korsman we went on board with him it's still not done yet though because Alan Banasak is not going to take no for an answer and he's pushed out wide Tyus Korsman that was great though he was able to make it he wasn't able to defend it though and Alan Banasak was able to come charging back through to the inside.
Yeah, and further up ahead, we also see that Keanu Luto is starting to close in onto Luca Walsh. So it looked like Luca was saving up a little bit uh, of time. It looked like he was quicker than Tristan up ahead in the field. But now the gloves are going to come off. The final two laps are going to start. So the drivers will start to use a little bit of ERS now. They will try and move themselves in to the ideal position for the final lap. And we can see that Tristan Debecor is trying to keep it closer and closer to Emil Lundell. Is he going to try and go for an overtake now on a Mistral straight? I think it will be very likely that he's going to attempt to do so. Let's see if we can go on board with the French driver as they're now going to make their way onto the Mistral straight. The Ligne Droit du Mistral, as the French call it so beautifully, as we see that Tristan is indeed getting closer. Is he going to go for the overtake, though? No, he decides against it. He stays behind for the time being. But is that the best move to make? I think he's going to wait until the second bid here of the Mistral straight and then go for the move there. Or he's going to try and do that on the final lap. But Emil has a lot of ERS to defend. It's not something that Tristan will likely know. But if he would know this, he perhaps would go for the overtake already. But he's still staying behind. But look at that. Look at Walso trying to come round the outside of the double drop the bull set. And is he going to make it work? He will not. But it means that a lot of shuffles are starting to happen and it's now all going to kick off almost the final lap now the drivers are going to come in through zach miles gets past daniel got shot keanu luto really banging on luca walso's door for p3 as well incredible battling we are about to go on to the final tour that was an opportunity for luca walso because he wants to be in a good position going on to the final lap of this race but it could be tristan debacourt's day as we make our way down towards turn number one and don't count out Ima lundell because still maybe he might be able to defend this but with the but with how much ers they've both got plenty of ers but with the drs as well crucially for tristan debacourt he is going to have some great speed on this final lap tristan debacourt then will make his way through then a crucial exit now and will make his way onto the mistral straight let's see how this final lap is going to go then the driver who has had the best finish of p4 uh, last time out in canada can he try to take the victory away he's four tenths away he's not close enough but is he going to make a late send on the brakes to the inside that is late stop by tristan debacle email lindell will saw that one coming he holds on to the position but now it's going to be a run all the way down towards the next corner and look at this email lindell going defensive Tristan Debacle trying to sweep around the outside how brave is Tristan Debacle feeling to go all the way around the outside in his home race he's run out of ERS he's still keeping his foot in wide will go Tristan Debacle in hope of getting better traction but he can't get there he can't get there and Ema Lundell seems like he's going to hold on on the final lap of this one Luca Walster is getting very close as well Tristan Debacle tried to do the up and under tried to get the switch back Ema Lundell parked it on the apex gave him no opportunity to try and do that and Ema Lundell will make his way through the final corner and is going to take his first victory of the season. Ema Lundell wins here in France after holding off Tristan Debacle all the way till the end. And it's going to be Luca Walsto who's going to take third. Keanu Lita takes fourth. And Daniel Gottschak finishes in P5. Ema Lundell is on top here in France. And a lot of points gained for Luca Walsto. A lot of points for Luca Walsh, but also for Emil Lundell, who now finds his way back into the championship fight. But a great, great battle into the Mistral chicane. It looked like Emil didn't get the best sort of exit there, breaking a little bit too late in order to stay ahead of Tristan, but managed to keep it tight. And through Senior they went, through the double drop the bull set they went, but round there, turn 11, it was clear that Emil was not going to give up on this race victory. Great, great race by the man who started on Paul, the Swedish... ...score, he is on the podium as we predicted. And look at Walso from sixth on the grid, goes to third as well. Another great race for Daniel Gottschalk. Started in P10, now makes his way across the finish line in P5. And also Keanu Luto with a pretty good result. So we're going to see some more drivers jumping up in the championship fight as Felipe Salza cannot do better, unfortunately, and it's P12 here tonight. But the gap actually not all that big, considering everything that he had to endure tonight. Emil Lundell ends it as the winner. What a day of racing we had. Tristan Debacor in second. Luca Walsto in third, gaining a lot of points as well. So did Emil Lundell. Tristan Debacor definitely is going to give him a big confidence boost after a good result in Canada and an even better one here in France. But it was... 
Oh, he almost took the victory there. It could have gone. Tristan Demacourt's away could have. Uh, and But Emo Lundell was able to just defend it. Daniel Godchak finishing fifth. Then it was Jane Tripkov and Tia Scores and both Mercedes making their way to up uh, on the last few laps. Then we had Zach Miles Kuba, uh, Sparky Felipe Sousa with a race to forget. And then Nadi Perez, Nico Vianney, Boris Zakasak, Linus Donovan, Carlos Torres, Mike Clint, and Noel Carman. Some of, you, some of your retirement from that race as well. And if we actually look at the points, Emil Lundell, uh, for now, was 11 in the standings with one third place and a tenth place that's given him points. So now, if he keeps that win, which will likely be the case, I didn't really see any incidents there, we'll move him up 27 points, but that would still be behind Luca Walso. So the man only really joined the championship fight after today is going to be Luke Walstow. He's going to pick up 10 points, which pushes him onto 40, but that's still 29 points down from Felipe Sosa. So Felipe Sosa will keep a lead of, of 19 points onto Yona Martins, but doesn't gain anything where perhaps he was looking to gain quite a few extra points. Although, in hindsight, this could be that this means that Felipe uh, will be looking to at least attempt to try and secure the championship in his home race, Round 10 Brazil, as we mentioned before the race. So perhaps he won't be too sad uh, in a few days or in a few weeks to come, but for now, definitely won't be too happy about it. Also, good result by Zach Maus. Picks up some more points. It's starting to move in closer. We'll stay fourth in the championship standings. And... Yeah, Tristan Debacor and uh, Keanu Lutto are going to move up a little bit now uh, in, in terms of the results. And it looks like we have our French driver uh, in the commentary box. Uh, Luke Walstow is also here, but we're going to start our interviews tonight with Tristan Debacor, who's just finished P2 in his home race. Take it away. Uh, yeah, hello. Um, yeah, yeah. Um... It was a good race, yeah. Um, I tried the undercut uh, like uh, Emil because I saw him uh, attack his CRS uh, the lap before. So I follow him and uh, we try to 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 make a uh, a big gap with uh, the group behind. But uh, they, they 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 came back, so we had to fight uh, a, a bit with uh, Luke uh, on the double right. But uh, yeah. Um, and uh, for the last lap, yeah, I was a bit like uh, one test too far um, to really attack him on uh, on the chicane. And yeah, it was uh, well uh, well placed for the rest of the of the lap. Well, let's first go back to qualifying though, because most of the qualifying session you were on provisional pole it was only at the end uh, when Felipe and uh, also Emil Lundell, later race winner, were able to improve quite a few tens, but it looks like your home track really suits you, doesn't it, uh, Tristan? Um, actually, on the previous game, it was uh, not the case, but uh, yeah, today uh, today uh, I was comfort comfortable. So, But uh, yeah, on the last lap, I, uh, I bottled my first sector, uh, so I... Uh, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I... Um, I try uh, to to be more aggressive on the part of the rest of the lap and uh, I cut. So yeah. But uh, right. before, before was still a good place. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's good to hear that you were happy with the results. Now, after the first bits of sequence, we saw uh, that you and Emil had a little bit of a gap uh, towards. Well, it was Daniel Gottschalk at the time. Of course, later on, Luke Walstow got passed. I was able to contest you a little bit more. Did you feel confident that you were in for the race fight after the pit stop sequence? Oh uh, yes, of course, yes. So uh, I mean, um, here in you know, the top five can win easily uh, if uh, they are they are on the DRS train. So yeah, even with one more uh, lap uh, hold uh, medium, it's uh, we c everybody can fight here. So yeah. All right, and it's starting to look like you're getting into the flow. The first three races, you were unable to pick up any points, sadly. Then in Austria, you were in 10th place, picked up one point. Last race out, you just missed out on the podium with a P4 in Canada, and now a P2 for you. So the first podium of the season so far. Are you happy with how the season is developing so far? Mm, yes, yes, because in Australia, I should have mm, um, scored points. But uh, we tried something on, with the Inters, and uh, it didn't uh, work. Uh, Belgium was not there. And uh, Monaco, my game was on the last lap, and I was 6. <laughs> and uh, I finished 14th because of that. But uh, yeah, uh, the, fourth, uh, the four last race was, uh, were uh, really good. Yeah. 
All right, and now, well, we're pretty much halfway done uh, with the season. We've had six tracks done. There's still five tracks remaining. After this, we still go to Portimao in Portugal. We go to Azerbaijan. We go to the Netherlands, Zandvoort. We go to Brazil. And finally, Coda, the Circuit of the Americas. Out of those five tracks, which one are you looking forward to the most? Um, I would say Brazil and Portugal. And uh, maybe, maybe Zandvoort as well. But uh, Baku and Kota, uh, they're okay. But <laughs> I really don't like uh, them. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, any final notes that you want to say, perhaps to the viewers back at home? Um, uh, GG to, to Lilian for uh, FP, his podium as well uh, in F2. <laughs> uh, yeah. I saw that he was also in the waiting room, so yeah, congratulations to yeah, him as well. Yeah. <laughs> That is great to hear. Well, thank you very much for joining us in the commentary box. And then we will now uh, move on to the man who finished in P3 tonight. Uh, and it's no stranger to us. He's been in the commentary box with us before. So it's nice to see him join us once again. It's Luke Walsto. Hello, guys. <clears throat> so that was quite the race, wasn't it, Luke? Yeah, it was quite the race. Um, I definitely played it a little bit risky with the the overcut hoping that i would um you know claw my way back through the pack which i did it obviously comes with the cost of burning more eos than i intended and it possibly cost me um a fight for the win so you reckon that the strategy going one lap later than all the other drivers uh, meant that you were out of contention for the race win yeah i just had to push through the pack too much i think and 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 burn too much um too much battery and by the time i had got to uh, where i needed to be i was um probably about 40 percent deficit to, to the cars ahead which doesn't make it hard uh, doesn't make it easy especially when there are cars behind trying to get track position for the end as well so yeah but uh, it was clean race we still went up you know from from quality and you know it could have gone far worse and yeah we'll learn from the pit stop and, and we'll move from that yeah, you definitely got really, really close uh, to P2 there, battling uh, with Tristan on the final lap. How was that battle? Yeah, no, I realized I had to go for it. Um, if I, if I, It would have been the now or never, and I just thought, I've got slightly fresher tires. I thought if I was going to go for it, it needed to be now, and it didn't quite work. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it was clean, and uh, that's all I can really hope for. And, and, yeah, it didn't cost me anything positions to go back anyway. So, yeah, I was, I was all right with it, to be honest. Well, that's good to hear as well. And yeah, if we look at the standings, you were, of course, already in P3 in the standings. Uh, if the results stay as is, of course, they're still provisional. But if they stay as is, you'll move up from 30 points, 10 extra to 40 points. That will move you within 29 points of our championship leader, Felipe Sosa. But we, of course, know that uh, the two drivers ahead of you, Jonah, of course, missed. Seasons as well. Bit of lag coming from Discord momentarily. Looks like it. Were you able to catch my question? Should I repeat it? You should repeat it. Uh, you <laughs> cut out. Yep. All right, that's no problem. So what we've seen uh, after tonight, if there we go, the again. championship leader. Um. But yeah, we know that uh, Felipe and Jonah, the two drivers ahead of you in the standings, are going to miss a few races, which could mean that you are going to join the championship fight in the next couple of races. Have you thought about that so far? Yeah, I'm definitely showing up to try and win the championship. It's definitely what I do. I show up to win um, every week, regardless of if I've done much practice or not much practice, or if the pace is good or if it's not. I look to do well in every session and push forward and try and win regardless because um yeah i know if i put the effort in i'm i'm up front at the top nearly every week so yeah it's definitely something i'm thinking about and i'm definitely um pushing forward for it all right and then my final question at least from my end uh, the commentary box of course next week we are going to portugal to the beautiful circuit located close to portimao um what are your thoughts on next week's track yeah, it could be worse. I don't. It's not. Um, I don't mind the track. It's not one of my best. It's not one of my most driven on either. But um, yeah, I don't really have any opinions on it. It's a. It's a decent track. It's high downforce. So um, you know, quality will be close. So um, all the preparation means a lot for that race to 
put the car up high up on the grid because it's going to be quite hard to overtake it's going to be a high downforce low regen low ERS regen circuit so yeah I'll try my best to put my car up the front end quality and um, yeah win that sounds wonderful. Well, this was the second time you've ended on the podium so far this season. Uh, are there any final closing words that you have for the people uh, watching the stream tonight? Uh, no, that's it. I don't have any final words. All right. Well, then I'd like to thank you as well, Luke, for joining us in the commentary box for the quick interview. Also, Tristan will join us for the interview earlier on. Uh, Omi, anything you still would like to mention? Uh, nope, not at all, but well done to uh, the pair of you and, of course, Email Lundell as well. And big thanks for uh, joining us for a quick little interview as well. Now, uh, let's quickly run you through the uh, calendar and we are going to have, and then we'll go off because I also need to, in about uh, 10 minutes time, I need to go commentate on Formula 3 practice as well. So I need to run off uh, very quickly. So we, uh, of course, I've been to Australia, Belgium, Monaco, Austria, uh, Canada, France, and then we'll be going to uh, Portugal, Azerbaijan, Netherlands, Brazil, and Texas. A lot of exciting races coming up uh, in this uh, calendar. So cannot wait for all of them to uh, begin. We'll talk to you more about that next week and of course how the standings look as well but Mitt what are your closing words for all for everyone watching well I think the qualifying definitely was very very exciting to see we also saw a lot of good uh, midfield battles here tonight but I think the real takeaway from uh, tonight's race is that the championship fight is still on that is the main thing championship battle is still on it's game on when we return next week in Portugal. We'll see you then. But for myself, Mitt, it's a big thank you for joining us. Like and subscribe. And of course, big shout out to our sponsors at GT Omega and SLC. We'll quickly have a word with them before we head off. But thanks for joining us. And we will see you next week when PSGO returns. Enjoy the Real Life Australian Grand Prix weekend. But we here at PSGO will see you first of all on Monday for the PlayStation Tears. But we will uh, see you here on the PC Tears next Thursday at Portugal. Goodbye.